Throughout history, Menominees have been uh, woodland people. That's their their background, their history is to be part of the part of the land, part of the earth, part of the surroundings. As the early, early Menominee leaders started to make their decisions about um, harvesting timber on the on the reservation, they always maintained a concept that they never wanted to harvest more than what the forest can provide. Basically, that was the early concept of sustainability, saying that you'll never take more than what can be provided for you to replace itself. Sometimes we like to say that to varying degrees, almost every tree species has a threat from an invasive non-native species. Oak wilt is a fungal disease that moves through the xylem, um, is transmitted by insects. Trees typically wilt and lose their leaves very fast. Um, so they'll turn brown or mottled green. All the leaves fall down very fast, like in a week or two, and cover the ground in a halo right beneath the trees. In essence, you want to amputate the disease. That's about all you can do. There's nothing that can cure it in the forest setting. You have to nip the disease off like gangrene. My name is Jeff Greedle. My Menominee name is Pomopame, means seen going by. Um, I'm head of the Forest Development Department here on Menominee for Menominee Tribal Enterprises. My role is to regenerate the forest, maintain the forest, create diversity, and look towards the future. My ultimate goal in the Oak Wilt areas is to recreate the elder plant communities using science as a tool guided by indigenous wisdom. At NIACS, we developed an adaptation workbook for helping managers integrate climate change into their management decisions. And so working specifically with MTE, we were thinking about how could we meet their objectives for um, the long-term sustainability of their forests and the cultural and economic resources that it provides. And then integrating climate change as an additional layer on top of that. So when it came to the oak wilt sites, how could we find species that are going to be better adapted to future conditions? What we're trying to do is diversify the stand with a little bit more climate hardy species of trees in here. On this particular site, it's bur oak and white oak, which will be introduced within the northern red oak of this area. So the main purpose of this isn't to grow large saw log trees with every species that's put in here. We're aiming for the few bur oak that will eventually take on that responsibility of an elder tree species. That's the purpose. The secondary trees are helping it along. We have kind of worked with bringing one or two of the species south of us in the next zone over up here to plant basically as one of the fringe trees on the outer fringe, kind of as a, as a indicator of what the stand's doing. If the bur oak and the white oak slow down on their growth and uh, the fringe plant starts picking up its growth, that's an indicator sign. When we do our thinnings in the forest, we don't really target a species so much to market it. What we do is we make our selections first with a batting order of high risk trees, low quality trees, trees of poor form. Those are the first selections we make. And uh, we always want to maintain the diverse stands. And that's kind of a response to climate change is to have your forest in growing in such a way that it's maximizing its strength and health so that it can withstand any problems or pressures that come up.